There is no sorrow in heaven. John chapter 14 verses 1 through 5. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Unfortunately, 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 there are millions of people who don't believe in heaven. There are millions of people who actively don't want to go to heaven. Can you imagine? There are those who do believe there is a heaven, and yet they don't want to go to heaven. An atheist during a debate on the Bible once said, Even if Jesus did exist, even if I agreed with a hundred percent, yep, he rose from the dead, yep, there's a God, yep, I don't deny any of that, does not mean that he is my Lord. If he did exist, I will happily go to hell. It would be worse of a hell for me to bow down before a Lord, regardless of the legend and historicity issue. Even if I agreed 100%, I would still reject that being as a Lord of my life because I am better than that. I cannot accept Jesus as Lord. You are much freer to live and enjoy your life unshackled from the demands. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? How can anyone have an attitude towards God and heaven like this? But judgment day will come for people like this. At the end of this man's life, God will give him what he wants. Even if a person wants hell, God will give them exactly what they are seeking for. I have heard people ask the question, why would God allow people to spend an eternity in hell? Some people actually want hell. There is nothing in the Bible that tells us that everyone in hell will be repenting and praying to God to leave hell. The reality is, some people don't want anything to do with God, and that's their choice. And God will allow them to face the full consequences of their choice. Death comes to us all, one by one. The question we all need to ask ourselves is where are we heading after death? The Bible describes our life as a vapor. And the older I get, the more I am coming to the acceptance that life is truly a vapor. Blink once, and you are an eight-year-old playing in the school ground. Blink again, and you are a 30-year-old with bills and responsibilities coming at you from all angles. Blink again, and you are a 65-year-old with grandchildren. Blink again, and you are an 85-year-old with the majority of your life behind you. Blink again, and you are gone from the face of the earth. Life moves quickly. God wants you in heaven. The God of this Bible wants you in heaven. God is not angry with you and trying to send you to hell. There are those people, Christians, who live with the constant fear of hell. They just are constantly and perpetually living in a state of fear. But listen to my words today. God wants you in heaven. If he didn't, he wouldn't have sent his only son to die for your sins and transgressions. Heaven is mentioned more than 550 times in the Bible. The Bible is a book about heaven. A composer wrote, How beautiful heaven must be! Sweet home of the happy and free, fair haven of rest for the weary. The joy of heaven is better experienced than learnt. There is no language that can describe its glory and joy. Look forward to heaven. It is a place of joy, a place where there are no tears, a place where sorrow is not allowed to enter. Allow me to talk about some things that are not allowed to enter the gates of heaven. Sorrow is not allowed to enter heaven's gates. Pain is not allowed to enter heaven's gates. Sickness and death are not allowed to enter the gates of heaven. Wouldn't you love that? Never having to see another graveyard, never having to see another loved one pass on, never having to see someone attempt to live life again after the person who is the dearest thing to their heart has died. And finally, Heaven is a place where the weary are at rest. This world is hard. It is not easy living in this world. Heaven is a place where the weary are at rest. There are so many Christians who are suffering and in a bad situation right now. 
Life has beaten them down. They have no hope. But I want you to think of the joy and rest you will experience in heaven. For what really brings me joy about heaven is not the pearly gates, it's not the streets of gold, it's not the innumerable number of angels that bring me joy about heaven. What brings me joy is the thought of seeing my Lord and my God, seeing God for the first time. Words cannot describe the emotions, words cannot describe the thrill. We cannot comprehend the feeling of finally seeing the Creator of all things. Imagine being in the presence of such holiness, being in the presence of such righteousness. Our God is described as a consuming fire. No mortal man has seen God and lived. We shall dwell with Him forever. The privilege of living with God forever and ever. Not only seeing God, seeing Jesus. Seeing Jesus will be a joyous moment. Being able to kneel before your Redeemer? What more can a Christian desire than to worship at the feet of the Lamb of God, the one who died for you, the one who is the reason you are in heaven? What more can a person ask for than to fellowship with Jesus for all of eternity? Seeing all the saints that have died and have gone to be with the Lord, what a joy that will be. We will see our believing loved ones in heaven, embracing them and hugging them after all the years we have spent separated from them. Do you have a mother or father, a brother or sister, a spouse who is in heaven? Can you imagine being able to hug them again? Heaven, can you imagine being able to have a conversation with them again? Heaven, can you imagine being able to tell them you love them and for them to respond saying, I love you too? Heaven, can you imagine being able to spend the day with them, not only the day, but all of eternity with them? Heaven. Heaven is a place where you will meet your believing loved ones. We will meet the disciples that walk with Jesus, the same disciples that saw him walk on water, the ones that saw him raise the dead, the same ones that saw him heal the sick. Oh, how wonderful heaven will be. We will see all the angels. Imagine seeing angels as far as the eye can see. Imagine you don't have to struggle with sickness and trying to prevent someone from dying. Brethren, Imagine a world without a hospital because everyone will be living in perfect health and there will be not a single day of pain. No hospitals, no graveyards, no undertakers. Revelation chapter 21 verse 4 And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the formal things are passed away. There shall be no death sorrow, crying, hunger, complaints, sickness, disappointment, depression, or any evil. All these evils do not have the ability to cross over or to creep into heaven. Heaven is a realm that is not compatible with evil or heartbreak. All the former things, the bad experiences that characterize this world will all pass away, never to be remembered or experienced again. Irrespective of the storms that are raging against you here, and regardless of the number of oppositions you have in this side of life, your consolation should be that this world is not your home and that heaven will make all the suffering you face in this life a distant afterthought. 1. Don't think that you are going to be in this situation forever. 2. Don't view this world as your home. 3. Don't fall in love with this world. Don't fall in love with this world. This world is deceptive in its nature. It's so deceptive in its nature. It will get you to think of everything except where your soul is going after you die. Have you noticed that less and less preachers are preaching about death, sin, heaven, hell, judgment? That's because most churches are worldly. They are focusing on the here and now. In modern day churches, it is considered very strange and unusual thing to urge people to prepare for what comes after death. But the truth is, if we look at the last thousand years, death has had a 100% record. It is something to prepare for. 4. Jesus was not lying when he said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Right now, somewhere, Jesus is preparing a place for you. Heaven is a real place that Jesus is preparing for us. Heaven is not a fairy tale. Heaven is not a state of thinking. 
Heaven is not a false hope in the minds of Christians. Heaven is not a feeling or emotion or dream. Heaven is not a fantasy. Heaven is not a vision. Heaven is a real place, a real place, a physical place. Over and over again, we see heaven referred to as a city. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 10, For he was awaiting the city having foundations, of which the architect and builder is God. Another metaphor for heaven is that it is described as a country. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 16, But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Heaven is also described as a kingdom. Matthew chapter 25 verse 34, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Once again, we are reminded that it was prepared for you. Heaven can't wait for the day you arrive.